I said that doesn't work, go buy that. Came back with this one, and what we had done is firstly ordered our units and those topics within the unit so it builds on prior learning. Okay, so we've got that in there. Uh, we have then built what we're going to put. No, yeah, I reckon just talk about this bit first, the core content bit. So basically, each of the core content, if you build on, builds on the topic before. So where we started off with age, that was our first topic, topic we taught. Um, we then built on to disability and, uh, and then gender and then physique. And how the fact that actually physique is very much linked to gender, which can then be linked back to your age. Um, and then obviously diet can affect all of those at different points in your life. So every time we were introducing a new topic, it linked back into the previous topic. The next bit, the space in this leaving section, okay? I try to get clever and think scientifically, can I logically try and get every topic linking back in at regular spaces and intervals? I gave up. All right, so um, it got too complicated. I couldn't do it. We would have run out of lessons, probably in year 10, <laughs> if we were even trying to get to the year 11 and stuff, okay? So it just physically couldn't work. So the next thing we did is, uh, if we go back to slides, the interleave bit, um, we then um, started thinking about times, no it's not actually, it's down here, uh, the spacing bit, of when we can actually try and revisit the old topics, but in a way that the gaps increased. Luckily, for our high level maths that we know, um, obviously if you teach unit one, you can recover unit one. When you go to unit two, you recap unit one, and so on. When you get to unit six, you cover unit one again at some point, unit two again at some point, three and so on, and the gaps between those covering, because there's more topics to cover, automatically increased in, in length. Okay? And I don't know why I ended up trying to do that, and why I just didn't use the simple way of obviously more topics means the distance or the gap between covering a topic again will get easier. So as you can see, we've covered unit one here, unit one again. When we get into, for instance, uh, this is unit uh, three at the moment, we've got a unit two recap that we have to do when we do this particular lesson. We try and do a unit three recap at this lesson. And what we do is just a simple test. Uh, a simple way to start the lesson, five minutes, here's some unit three questions. Or with your partner, can you map out what you did in unit three and so on. So the gap is there, but we're constantly trying to feed <coughs> back and bring back old information. So when we get back to unit seven, unit eight, there'll be times in that unit where they've got to cover one, two, three, four, five, six, for simple five minute starter activities, um, some bell work, that sort of thing, before they move on. Testing. As we said, testing isn't boring, okay? It doesn't have to be boring. Um, so we came up together, and we had our NPT of us as well, we kind of came up with as many different fun tests that we could do to get those space and effects. When we did have to cover Unit 3 again, uh, and try and um, re retrieve that information, what could we do? So little things like a picture link, test your partner, um, knowledge builder, just a minute. Uh, how many words can you remember about, I just put up the word like somatotype, which is a topic we covered in Unit 1. Okay. So the little things like that just we do for five minutes in the lesson at those designated times which we've planned out because they are something we'd like to control, the gaps in the space in, so that students can actually have opportunities to constantly keep developing those retrievals, um, uh, the retrieval strength, the content and information that they were doing. Um, and kids don't realise what's going on. I had a year uh, 10 parents in a couple of weeks and Lewis in my class said, I don't know why sir, but it just seems to stick. Okay? I just need to remember what we're doing in our lessons. Um, because lots of little things like this are just working really, really well. And as you can see, just little fun things like that. Um, uh, hinge questions in the middle of lessons. Without your book, try and uh, define these terms, okay? Just lots of little things for the start of lessons as kids come in, sit down, won't go. And they love it, they get used to it, they're PE, so they're competitive. Um, and they just try and have that fun and that link in and they try and discuss and so on. Um, that was Fran's Unit 2 recap that she did in her Unit 3. So the images are up there and they had to try and... They had to work it out. So I had a guess at what they were and it was all to do with role models and media and technology of the unit. And then each of them <coughs> had to link into an, a, 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 an article that they then read to recap the information that we talked previously. So again, it's just trying to make those low stakes but even though increasingly gap spacing times that we're going to recover stuff. Um, next thing, the interleaving section, as I said, um, if we look back to here, um, there are times where we actually link in old topics. So obviously there's nothing in these boxes really because we've just taught a new topic. Okay? But when we get down to here, link back to physique and uh, talk about how diet can affect body size, uh, body size and shape. 
So we've actually started actually mapping in ways that we can bring in old topics. So how might the following influence on components of fitness is, a, is what we're on at the moment? And I've asked them to go back to unit one and tie in unit one topics before we're doing in unit three. So we're getting to try and really think about bringing in old concepts of talk and trying to keep re-triggering it. So we're now interleaving in a different way and also opportunities in our lesson, uh, like Fran's one here, about thinking uh, about role models. Yes, yeah, so do with healthy lifestyles and thinking about how role models can obviously in sport and encourage that as well. So it's getting into a discussion about that. And planning out the actual opportunities, sponsorship, time to media, age and disability in general. So actually sitting down and planning out times when topics really closely work together and bringing those old topics back into our new topics work fantastic well for us. Um, pretty much done. Um, it's, it's something which is working, okay? Um, we couldn't do a real accurate comparison with what we did last year with Unit 5, uh, with our last test and this test because um, we can talk a bit different way. Last year we did a massive PBL project based on one bogus ethic of excellence, so the two were too different to even compare the test results. Um, but my group, which pretty much did it hardcore um, and really went into developing this, storage strength, retrieval strength, interleaving space and so on, was about 8-9% higher than the rest of the classes. Um, and it's not because I have a more able class, because we were pretty much balanced and equal. We were just gut instincts and trying to pull apart on our first real evidence that it was more the way we were delivering, the way we were trying to put in these cognitive ideas and, and so on into a simple way which, which probably had the outcomes. And like I said at parents when Lewis turned around and said, I don't know why so, it just seems to stick. Shows that we are subtly doing it, but at the same time it's having the benefit and the impact on developing that story strength and the true strength for the students in our class. Any questions? Because I'm looking at what we've got about a minute. <laughs> can take Hi, um, fantastic. I work in a girls' school and I love the idea of the low stakes testing because we've got a big project at the moment trying to get girls to take risks, which we really struggle with. Um, but I'm an English teacher, so we don't have in the same way necessarily a body of content that yeah. they have to learn, but we do have a body of skills. And I wondered if you had any gut feeling or any experience of how the same structure would work, but say with key skills rather than with key content. Uh, Learners by David, he on his blog, because um, I've grown to past him and stuff like bouncing things around and that, um, he has um, on his Wellington um, talk last year, he's got it, and I'm really sorry, I'm going to be really stupid about English here, but um, give me some of the good content that you do. So things like uh, analysis and um, uh, uh, using punctuation for effect, that's a bit easy. He, yeah, yeah, he's got, he's got um, on his interleaving one and his uh, space one, he, you know, he was thinking, instead of just blocking and, and teaching the block, he is really colourful. Um, one bit, then the next bit, and if I find it, um, I wish I had that picture. No, but it's, 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 it's his Wellington speech from last year, he's talking about it in an English context, um, and he said in his lessons he teach, um, right in here and there's this here and that there and that there and then the next week it recycles and goes on and so on so he interleaves his topics that way and, and spaces them out obviously that way as well yeah. um, obviously using the skills base so he still taught his Romeo and Juliet whatever it was he was teaching but there was a different focus a skill focus for each one did it and he mapped it out um, he's here today so I'm um, glad him because that. um, that's what you. we were talking about we're very much a content based but obviously there are subjects more skills based yeah. which was linked that through but um, his blog was fantastic thank um, you it was really helpful no questions Love. did you use the same multiple choice test beginning middle end and then carry on or is it different uh, we mixed it up we, we um, in our, with our unit um, two pre-test unit one pre-test and so on at the end as well um, and the last lesson of that unit, we did the pre-test again, so now we did the post-test and see if it improves. And then the lesson after that, we did the same exam, and after that it followed on. So we did recover um, that test again uh, to see if there's a difference, a remarkable difference. And we actually got really geeky and broke it down and analysed that as well to see if there's any marked improvement. Um, kids are getting like 100% in the end, like 9 out of 20 out of 20, 9 out of 19 and so on. Um, but the multiple choice bit, as Fran said, it was more of a benefit as well because um, just thinking about the other <coughs> possible answers as well triggers the retrieval of information which wasn't necessarily related to that question, but even increased the retrieval strength of other questions. Do you know what I mean? So, multiple choice we found out has been really Yeah, I think powerful. it's really evident on a topic where they might not have any clue about it whatsoever. I mean, our unit two was very much to do with media and role models, so they, they see that all the time. But what we've just done is been quite specific about 
components of fitness and training methods. And I think for some of them, I could really see in my class where they're actually trying to work it out and spending time, so they're already thinking about it. And then when we came to cover that topic, they were like, oh yeah, I remember where we, and it did make a difference. Little things like that, I just think, at least they remembered something. Because we used to do um, just simple Q related tests. What is so and so? Well, I said with more mature, it's the fact that there are other options. Like I said, it, it makes them think about other things outside of what they need to focus on, which again, subconsciously is increasing the retrieval strength of other things, okay? I've explained that really badly, all right? But there we go. Um, right. Oh yeah, go. I was, I was gonna, I've done a lot of um, things that you mentioned there today with my teaching this year, particularly more than ever before. And I've got two A-level English classes that I've been really intently trying to map a lot of this stuff out. And one of them is working incredibly well. I've noticed some massive gains and uh, kids are doing some brilliant work. The other one, less so well, is because it's because of two main reasons. One, it's entirely the kids have so much absence at different times, and sometimes they're less reliable with their homework. Yeah. When you map out things in such a an incremental way or the build upon it, yeah. it's mm -hmm. such a, a devastating Yeah, of course, of course. Found that as well. We're, we're very lucky that our attendance in our classes were all right because we'd have exactly the same as that, I reckon. Um, because I said we pinpointed and practice and so on to make sure things were mapped out. Because um, I chatted to Alex quickly when we did map it out and I showed him, Alex, how do you do this? Because I showed him my spreadsheet and stuff and he said, look, you, you've got to be realistic that things change. You have an inset day, you have a, a, when your lesson's supposed to be on and obviously you can't do that week but you planned it out and it's kind of like rolling with the punches a little bit. Um, and we, we're very conscious of that and we can kind of jump back in and if we know we've missed something we can, and the kids missed it, we're quite good at quickly linking the stuff back in, just sort of add pop because we're in a lesson and we're trying to do it that way. But you can be right that if you do get too strict and this must happen on this lesson, absence, inset days, snow days, uh, that sort of thing causes an absolute nightmare to the whole plan. Uh, fantastic. Right, um, we are done. Thank you very much for